we left off talking about induced oh well it was close talked about induced currents from changing magnetic fields so let's say we have a loop and we've got a magnetic field into the page It's going to take a second to draw, but we have a loop of wire and a magnetic field into the page. Now, I want that, I want this. Let's say that that magnetic field is equal to CT. So it's increasing as time goes on. So, this magnetic field is increasing into the page. And we said a couple of things happen with that. So I'm going to write down Faraday's law. Um, EMF equals negative change in flux over the change in time. Okay. And so because this magnetic field is increasing, okay, we're, we're going to induce an EMF. So it induces an EMF which causes a current which creates a magnetic field and that magnetic field opposes the change. Okay, so looking at this situation, the change in my magnetic field, uh, the thing that we called change in flux or change in time is also into the page, which means that my created magnetic field, we'll call it B induced, has to be opposite of that or out of the page, which means the current I in this loop will be counterclockwise or um, in that direction around the loop. That's what we talked about before. Um, so I'm going to pose a question and then answer it right afterwards. What happens when a wire is not there? I have a changing magnetic field. I have a wire of loop R there's an induced EMF in that wire but does the wire have to be there to get that EMF better question what causes that EMF well it turns out this is independent of the wire this is independent of the wire it turns out that there will be there's an EMF in the wire because an electric field is created so because of this changing magnetic field, an electric field is created in space. Because that electric field is created, I get a potential difference across that loop. And then all of these things happen. Okay. This EMF happens because of this induced electric field in space because of the changing magnetic field. So we're going, to, we're going to look at, at least an equation, how that works. Okay. But the essence of what we're saying, and let me, let me actually erase some of this. The essence of what we're saying is that...
changing magnetic fields create electric fields. This is more of Faraday's law. So if we take this EMF thing and if we remember back to voltage and, and the electric field, we remember that voltage is the negative integral of the electric field uh, dotted with R, dotted with the distance. Now, looking at this, we said that that current was going to be counterclockwise. And it was due to this EMF. Um, so, in this case, if B is equal to CT, my, my EMF, we look at the flux through the loop, that's constant. It's, it's the magnetic field that's changing. So it's, it's B times pi R squared. So it's, it's C pi R squared. Um, my induced EMF, whatever that comes out to be, what that means is if we do, if we do Kirchhoff's rules and go around this loop one time, our change in current is equal to that induced EMF. So that means, if we're going to look at R, actually, we're going to change this to an L. If we take that line integral around this, we'll actually find the value of the electric field that causes that EMF. So that means something weird for our EMF. That means in this space, my EMF does this. My, I'm sorry, my electric field points around in a circle. And my electric field is constant at the radius of this circle. It's a weird thing. We left off um, on an example that you're supposed to do for homework over the weekend. But these things represent my electric field. It's going in a circle. It's different than an electric field that we've seen before. And it's independent of the wire. So what we can do, we know that this voltage is equal to that EMF, E dot DL. What we can say, um, another way to write Faraday's law, is that this EMF is equal to E dot DL. And that's equal to the change in flux over the change in time. The second example from our induction one worksheet had us trying to find the electric field caused by our changing magnetic field. Now, the nice thing about this is that at a given radius, my electric field is going to be constant. So we can usually pull that out. <clears throat> we can usually pull that out of the integral, um, which is super, super easy. Okay, so the, our, our takeaway from this is that changing magnetic fields create electric fields, and they're weird circular electric fields. We're usually used to seeing electric fields starting in infinity and ending somewhere else. These electric field lines go in concentric circles um, around that point of change. All right, emotional EMF. It's a funny name. Sometimes we can get an induced EMF and a change in the magnetic flux through something because of movement. And so we're going to look at a really quick, really easy example So let's say we have a constant magnetic field B that's pointing into the page. And let's say, we have a little track right here, we have a cart. And that cart has a loop of wire on top of it. And the dimensions of the loop of wire are um, A and then little b on the top. And, and right now the cart is moving with a constant velocity v into our magnetic field. Now, 
as the car enters the magnetic field, I'm going to start to have a change in the flux through that. And, and so the flux here is going to be that constant magnetic field uh, B, well, the flux is a constant, B times the area that's going into this. Well, that area moves as a function of time. So it's going to be A times dB. So my flux is B, my magnetic field, times A times the differential change in this part. So my change in flux over my change in time is B A D B over D T. Well, B is that little x direction, so it's the magnetic field times A times the velocity of the cart. That's my EMF. We need to decide the direction. Well, while we're entering, we have a magnetic field that is increasing in the loop. So we're getting more magnetic field, okay, so B is increasing, more magnetic field into the loop. What that tells me is that dB over dt is also into the page. So my induced magnetic field has to be out of the page. And that tells me that the current in the loop as we enter the wire, current is going to be counterclockwise because we want that induced magnetic field to be out of the page. So we know the EMF, we now know the induced current, or at least the direction of it. And, and it's this easy, it's B times the height of the thing times the velocity. Um, so um, that's how we get that EMF, that's how we find it. Pretty straightforward. Now, um, what we're going to have to start looking at in some of our problems uh, is the effect of that force. That force on that current carrying wire. Because now I have a current that's up, and it's over here, and it's down here, and it's in this over here. I have a counterclockwise current, but I have a current in this loop of wire in a magnetic field. So if we look at that, um, the current is up, the magnetic field is into the page, current's up, magnetic field's into the page, and the force on this wire, F, is going to be backwards. Now we know magnetic force is equal to I times the length of the wire times the magnetic field that the wire is in. Well, the I is going to be my induced EMF over the resistance of the wire times the length of the wire in the magnetic field, A, times my magnetic field, B. So if we plug in what we have, it's B A V, which is velocity, over that resistance times A times the magnetic field. Magnetic field squared times A squared over the resistance times velocity. That's the magnitude of that force. At some point, I'm going to be mean to you and asks you to find that velocity as a change in time. If we push this in with a constant velocity, it's allowed to speed up or slow down. Other times, I may just ask you the force acting on the wire as it enters. Um, but this is the beginning of motional EMF. This, uh, turns out, is, is this is the application that we're going to do with our problems, and that's going to be a little tough. So.